Vibe Coding is taking over and Vibe Coding tools are some of the fastest growing startups on the planet right now. But if you don't know how to correctly use them, you're going to fall behind. We're going to cover the secrets of prompting, how to add user login and sign up, how to manage your database, how to add AI functionality, and how to publish your app for the world to access. At the end, I'm going to cover some really helpful debugging tips to prevent you from getting stuck while you're vibe coding. Thank you to Mocha for sponsoring this video. We're going to use Mocha to vibe code in this video, and you can click the description to follow along for free. Let's jump in. So here we are in the Mocha dashboard. Now, before we actually start building and giving the AI something to do, I want to talk a little bit about prompting because prompting and basically the planning and context and everything that goes into what you tell the AI is going to be a major factor in the quality of the app that you get out. And that's going to be whether you're using Mocha here or any vibe coding tool. So Mocha actually has a best practices guide, which I think is really great. I'm going to go over it really quickly and we're going to use these techniques and keep it in mind throughout the entire video. So stay with me because we just have to cover this part in the beginning to make sure we get a good result in the end. Just going to spend a few seconds here. We want to be specific and clear. We want to make sure if we want to edit just a specific file, we can give that to the AI here in Mocha. We want to make sure we're keeping context in mind. So we want to understand the full context of what we're trying to achieve. So explaining the goal, providing relevant constraints, mentioning specific technologies or patterns we want to use. We want to break down complex requests. So we don't want to give it 10 things that are all complicated, all to do in one prompt. We want to start with core functionality and then ask it to build on functionality feature by feature. We don't want to do everything in one prompt. This is really important. And then if we are going to use the fix with AI feature with Mocha, we want to do that once or twice. If, if that doesn't work, we want to try describing the problem in detail to debug and then work with the AI to debug the issue. So those are just some of the helpful prompting tips that we should keep in mind when we're building with Mocha or again, any vibe coding tool. We want to be aware that there is an attach file feature so we can add screenshots. We can add screenshots of style inspiration or what's happening in the actual app. And then what's nice about Mocha is there's also some inspiration that we can use to get started with. So let's say we want to create a color palette generator and we're going to use that inspiration prompt. So I'm going to go ahead and send that off. And here we are in the Mocha editor. So on the left side, we can see we have the prompt. It's going to let us know what it's doing. Right now it's initializing. We have a discuss mode that we can click. If we click discuss mode, it's going to let us talk about what we want to build and plan it out instead of just basically usually when you send a prompt, it's going to start coding. This is something that most vibe coding tools have, and it's really helpful to take advantage of, especially when we're building more complex features. We have the ability to add files here again, as I mentioned before, then something that separates Mocha and makes it a little bit different from other vibe coding tools is the database is fully integrated by default. You have a development and a production database when you publish your app. That part's really nice to have two different databases, something that I don't see in many vibe coding tools that I've used. We can jump into the settings really quickly while it's initializing our app. So there's a lot of other features here inside of Mocha, such as whether your project is private or public. We can add a custom domain, which is really helpful after we publish it. Secrets, this is where we would add like API keys if you wanted to connect to OpenAI or any API. It handles this really well. For Google sign-in, you can add your own Google account so it shows your brand instead of Mocha's brand, but Mocha makes it really easy to have that Google authentication. I can show you how to do that in a little bit. And then something that you should also know that Mocha has, if you go up to the top left, you can click show logs and that's going to show the logs of your app, which can be really helpful for debugging. So I just want to highlight that before we get started as well. There's also a code tab where you can see all of the code that was written. All right, so we have our first version generated by Mocha. So then you're going to have a preview window here where we can go and actually test out what we see. And this is a really important part of vibe coding is doing the testing. If you see any bugs or if you come up with any ideas that you want to change, then we're going to do that here in the chat. So we're going to come up with some ideas and you're going to see how we do that prompting and getting the result. And it's pretty cool. It came up with these different types of color palettes, and then you can just click generate new and then copy the hex colors, which is pretty cool. Or just click on them to copy. This is actually a very cool MVP of what could be a really powerful and more built out app. So I think this is perfect for this example. 
So the feature that I'm asking for is I'd like it to add a simple example website below the colors so I can see what these colors look like on a real website. So I'm going to send that off. This is not too complicated, but I did want to come up with something that was a little bit more than just changing a button color to show you how powerful Mocha is and what is possible with vibe coding. So here we can see it's creating a new file and Mocha takes care of all of this. So you don't have to understand really the file setup, but it's helpful to know you can see what's happening in real time. And here we go. We have our sample website preview, which is pretty cool down here. And if we change the colors to generate new, we can see it's updating it here on our sample websites. So I think it's cool that it was able to do this and just, okay, I have this idea and now it exists. And I think it actually gives us a little bit more context into the colors and helps us decide what we like. Actually, that one I really like. I think that's the best color that I've seen. So I really like these monochromatic styles, and I don't think I would have known that if I didn't build out this feature. The next thing I want to explain to you is how do we go from this app that is an editor to a website or app that anyone can access. So here we want to go up to the publish button, and we're going to keep visibility on private, which is going to mean this is more of a mocha feature. I don't want others to be able to clone the website. And then I'm going to publish the app. So you can go in and actually change the URL. And here it just brought me to the publishing setting, so I could change it to design colors and publish that to have a custom subdomain under Mocha. Or we can go to domains and we can actually add a custom domain or buy a domain directly on Mocha. Let's say I wanted to purchase custom colorstyles.com and then set it up so that it's all hooked up to our app. So all of that is possible, but for now we just have it on our custom domain here, which is design-colors.mocha.app. And if I go to that, then this is now live on the internet. Anyone can access it and we can go to any of the styles that we want, generate new, copy them. It's all working just like it was in the preview. So everything that we've seen so far is giving you the fundamental knowledge of how to vibe code and how to build with Mocha. The next thing I'm going to show you is how we can create user accounts, save information to a database and do it all in one and let the Mocha AI build it for us. So what I want to do is allow people to log in and save their favorite color schemes to their own account. So to do this, we're just going to send the prompt. I'd like to add user authentication. User authentication is the keyword for creating accounts so people can sign in and save their favorite color schemes to their own account. Mocha is going to add tables in the database so that users can save that and it's going to be associated with their own account. So let's see what Mocha does, but I'm pretty sure it's going to create those tables for us. Added user authentication. So now I imagine if I click save, it's going to, yep, prompt me to sign in, which is cool. With Mocha, they have sign in with Google, which makes it, I think, really easy for users to sign in. Here I'm signed in with Google and now I am logged in. So let's say I go to monochromatic, I'm gonna generate new, I'm gonna click save. I can save this palette as blue ocean. Let's save that. And then now down here, I have my saved palettes, which is pretty cool. And I can load it as well. So we can see what it looks like. So why don't we generate a new one and let's save this. And again, it's showing what it looks like. So I'm going to call this red color and save it. And now I can go back and forth and load the red color and blue ocean styles. And everything's going to change here in the website. And if we go to our database, we can see under saved palettes, the two saved palettes for this user. And if we go back to our build tab and if we log out, now, no longer can we see those saved palettes. So everything's working correctly with user authentication and the database all built in. Just wanted to take a quick break and thank Mocha for sponsoring this video. If you haven't already, click the link in the description to open up Mocha and build your own app for free alongside me. There's a lot more to cover, including some tips to make your app design amazing. So let's jump back in. Now, one thing that you should know about Mocha is right now, if we went back to our app that is published live, we do not have that sign in ability yet. And the reason for that is there's a difference between the development database and the development app and then the production app. And you can also see this reflected in the database. So if we go here and we go to the top left, you can see development and then production. So under production here, this is live and you can see those tables are not there because we haven't pushed it live to production yet. So to do that, we're just going to go ahead and publish the app, which is going to publish everything from our development version, which is what we're using here in the build tab to the live version, which is on the actual URL that other people can access. This is also a nice feature that 
allows you to test things in the build development version, have your own database, and then in the live version, only push it live once it's ready. So now if we go ahead and we go into our live version, we can see the sign in button is now there. And if we go to our data tab, you can see now under the production, we're going to see users and saved palettes. So all of that is there in the production database. But it's empty because we haven't actually used it in the production database and signed in yet. Now, the next feature I'm going to show you is how we can build a team functionality into this app. So let's say you're building an app. You don't just want users to be able to sign in and save things for themselves. You want it to be a team so that everyone on the team can access the same color palette. So we're going to go to the left side chat. This time I'm going to use discuss mode. And here I'm just asking how to do that. And what's nice about discuss mode is it's going to plan out and before it actually writes any code, come up with the best way to implement this feature. Now, of course, you might not actually need that for a simple website like this, a team, but it's going to be helpful to see how this happens because in a lot of B2B apps that you might be building with a live coding tool like Mocha, you're going to want to implement a feature like this. So I reviewed what it's telling us to do, which is update the database, add different endpoints, and I'm going to go ahead and turn off discuss mode and say, let's build it now. And it's going to have to refactor our app to work with teams. And this is something I'm going to be actually really impressed if Mocha is able to do this on the first try because adding team functionality and refactoring the database and making sure that it all works is not an easy task. All right, so we have a team feature now. I'm just going to go ahead and click the team management. Let's create a team and test this out. Call it no code MBA, create the team. I'm an admin. It looks like I can manage it. Let me invite a team member. I'll just do my email. And I'm actually really curious if this ends up working. So it looks like it didn't quite work, which is actually a really great example to go over some debugging when you are vibe coding. Okay, we went to the team feature and I tried to add myself as an, another email. And then I logged in as that email and it didn't work. So we're going to write a prompt to explain what happened and see if the AI can debug it. So I'm going to say it's close to working. I was able to create a team and invite a member with an email address. So that's saying, okay, what part is working? But the part that's not working is when I logged in with that new member's email address, the team did not show up for them in the team section. I'm going to send that off and let's see if Mocha is able to resolve this. But again, building out team functionality is a bit complicated. So hopefully on this prompt, it's able to do it. So a little bit more debugging. I basically tested it out. It said when I would invite someone, it would add them now to the team invitations table, which it created, which is great. But I can see that this was empty. So that didn't work. What I did was in the build tab, I just explained that's what happened. So this is very common with vibe coding is going back and forth. You have to explain what errors you're seeing. And then especially when you have something like Mocha, where you can go into the database and it said it should be there, but it's not, that's a really great way to debug. You don't want to just get frustrated and assume it's not going to work. It's just all about going back and forth with the AI. Okay, now it looks like in the data tab, team invitations did invite me. And now when I log in under my personal email, we can see it added me to the NoCode MBA team. So that all did work perfectly. Now we have successful team management, which is awesome. And what I would do as a next step is I would add email functionality to this. That's why we connect to an API like resend, which would give us the ability to email users and let them know that they're invited to a team. But we have just the basic team functionality built in, which is really cool. One more thing that I want to show you because it's really common with vibe coding and really helpful to see how Mocha handles it is adding in AI functionality. In our case, it's going to be open AI. So I'm going to show you how easy it is to add open AI functionality. And we're going to do this with a simple prompt. So we're just saying I want to add open AI functionality. I want to have a button to generate a name for the color palette. No need to save it for now, but let's use OpenAI to do this and I can provide an API key. And now we will let Mocha build this out and then you're going to see how Mocha asks for the API key. It's something that I really like and it makes it easy and something that makes it hard to make a mistake. So here on the left, it's just asking for our OpenAI key, which I can add. Something that's nice that Mocha has is you can click the walkthrough button, which will basically give you a step-by-step explanation of how to get your API key. And this would apply to any API that you're connecting to. So it's really nice that it has this. And now I'm going to paste in my API. So I saved it and you can also see that in the settings if you want under secrets. That's where your API key settings, our secrets will be saved. And now we have this new button called generate name. And let's see what it comes up with green and pink. There we go, tropical harmony. 
It looks like it's working. Let's try a few more. So this will be really obvious. It's all blue. Let's see what it comes up with. Ocean Serenity. Let's do another one. We'll try green, generate name. So yeah, so that's how we know it's working. The AI functionality is all built in and the sky is really the limit of what type of AI apps you want to build. So really cool that we were able to so easily get that connected. And of course you could do this with Anthropic, with Perplexity, with any AI provider that you want, and it would be the exact same method. The last thing I'm going to show you is a simple trick to improve the design while letting the AI come up with ideas for this. So we're going to just say, I'd like to improve the design and UI UX of the app. Please think step-by-step step about how we can improve this and make it really modern and sleek. So we're going to start with discuss mode and let it come up with some ideas. We're going to review it, and then if we're happy, we'll let it execute and redesign this to just improve the overall design and just make it a little bit sleeker. Now, I don't think the design of this is terrible, but I'm curious what the AI is going to come up with. But I like what it came up with, and I'm going to say let's execute on the suggestions. So it, come, it came up with some good suggestions across the board, and let's see what it looks like after generating it. It just made a lot of changes, and I'm really happy with what it did. On the left side, we can see it added all of these improvements and you could just see how much nicer it looks. I might put this down here, not all in that far, but overall really like how it looks. The fonts are better. There's better animations. Let's see, I'll generate a name. Everything just looks really nice. Yeah, it was as simple as that. Just asking it to think about it and then execute on it. And then of course we could go and make smaller changes. For example, say, hey, put this below the nav bar little things like that we could improve, but overall, I'm really happy with these changes. But overall, this looks really good. So then just to show you, if we go to our not updated version, this is what it looked like before because we haven't pushed it to production yet. And this is what it looks like now. So you can see the improvement that was made. I hope that you learned something in this video about vibe coding, how to go from start to finish, how to add user authentication, add open AI integration, add team functionality, add features, debugging. We covered a lot. Leave a comment below to let me know what you think. If this is something that you could see yourself using, if there's any ideas that you want me to cover in future videos, just let me know. And be sure to click the link in the description to go to Mocha and build your own AI apps just like this. Subscribe to our YouTube channel to get even more free content like this. And we'll see you in the next video.